my husband and I, my late husband and I, uh, my dad helped us build a house in, here in uh, <clears throat> 50 years ago. And uh, we've lived here ever since. And uh, then I needed to borrow some money one day. And uh, I borrowed some, and but then I was getting information from two or three different people and I got confused and didn't follow through and didn't know what to check on and that's what has happened that we're go going through the foreclosure now and uh, uh, I, I, I guess there's no going back. There's, I just don't think there's any possible way but I, I wish I could live here. I won't have many years left. Okay, take number two. <laughs> Good afternoon, class. Today we're meeting with Mr. Tim Gregg, uh, part of a team of realtors here in Nashville, his wife being the other part of the team. Uh, they are real estate investors as well as landlords. They own property here in Nashville. And Mr. Gregg, thank you very much for taking time out for this interview today. And I'd like to start off just by asking you just a couple of simple questions. First, uh, if you will give us your background as far as uh, the real estate market and, and investing in real estate. Sure. My wife and I, my wife's the realtor. I really handle more of the nuts and bolts uh, out there. How often in, in, in that experience over the years have you had to actually evict uh, you know, it doesn't happen all that often. Uh, most of our tenants stay three years or longer. Um, the ones that stay less than three years, typically they, they stay less than a year. I mean, if, if they stay beyond a year, they're usually there three years or longer. Uh, it's that first year that sometimes kind of the ones that aren't going to stay, go, go, yes, sir, yeah. And so, uh, probably in 15 years, I would guess we've not had more than five evictions. Wow. Five, maybe six. That's good. Now, is that because you consider yourself to be a good landlord, patient landlord, or is it because you just chose a good tenant? It's probably because we've done a good job of, of screening tenants on, yeah. the, on the end, you know, at the beginning. Um, but, you know, we've had several occasions, certainly, where folks have gotten into financial difficulty because they either lost their job and had to find another one or they went to the hospital for 45 days for some physical issue. And when someone has a reason, a good reason, for being late on their rent, we'll work with them until they get back on their feet and, and so we've you know we've we've had our share of folks who got behind and, and we let them stay uh, and they worked their, their way out of the difficulty uh, the ones that we had to evict were the ones that uh, got behind and, and just stayed behind what do you consider to be a fungal gosh that's a tough question I've never really thought about that I guess uh, someone I guess my off-the-cuff remark would be it would be a, uh, uh, a property owner whose property was not well maintained uh, and was in an area of other where other properties were horribly maintained as well. Okay. Well, do you, do you consider that to be, because it's actually not illegal, but do you consider that to be ethically uh, wrong or or? How, how do you feel about that? Well, I think every landlord should maintain their property very well. They should always, everything should always work. It should, you know, have, it should be uh, clean, at least when the tenant moves in. Um, so probably should, all, yeah, should be bug free, rat free, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it just should, you know, the landlord. 
landlord's responsibility is to provide a a clean, well-maintained property for the resident to rent. How aggressive do you think a landlord should be in uh, recovering rent payments, late payments, that that type of thing? With him? Well, you know, uh, if an individual has a job and has and just hasn't paid the rent because they've spent their money elsewhere. Then I think it's certainly within the landlord's um, um, rights to uh, go after their paycheck and try and guarantee their paycheck and get the back rent paid. Do you think that uh, harassing phone calls, uh, you know, showing up at inappropriate times uh, at the tenant's residence? is warranted when those type of situations arise? Well, if, if we have, the one time we've guaranteed wages, of course, we just turned it over to the lawyer. Where they handle it through the individual's employer. Um, and no one went to their home or anything like that. Oh, really? Of course, they weren't, they weren't living in our property right. at the time because they had been evicted for non-payment of rent. Yes, sir. So the lawyer just went to uh, the employer, the individual's employer, to guarantee the wages through the courts. It's a pretty clean kind yeah. of thing. Sure. Um, here in Tennessee, we have a Tennessee Landlord Tenant Act, Title 66, Chapter 28, which kind of calls rental agreements, security deposits, that type of stuff. Are you familiar with that act? Uh, I'm fairly familiar. We, uh, of course, we employ a management company to manage the properties. They're extremely familiar with it, and our direction to them is follow the law. You yes. don't always do the right thing. You know, they do a, a, a pretty good job, I think, of, of doing the right thing. So back to this issue of, of ethics, what, what name just maybe a few things that you, you think would be unethical uh, in a tenant-landlord agreement? Uh, for me, I think the... the, the the list would would certainly include maintaining the property. Yes, sir. Uh, if something goes wrong with the property, the uh, landlord is re is responsible to get out and fix it. Uh, you know, immediately within 24 to uh, 48 hours. Uh, and uh, uh, certainly, the landlord is responsible. It's an ethical thing to do to uh, when the tenant moves out, go in and, and update everything fix everything that you can find that's wrong with the property so it's in great shape when the new tenants come in. Uh, so maintenance of property, I think, is, is, is an ethical issue uh, if you don't do it. Yes, sir. Uh, the other, a couple of other things have to do really with uh, uh, unreasonable late charges. Uh, I would advise any resident not to sign a lease that has a uh, an unreasonable late charge if you're a day late on your rent. Yes, sir. I mean, I think it's the right thing to have a late charge because there needs to be some incentive for people to pay on time. But, uh, uh, you know, too high late charges, um, you know, uh, not returning uh, the deposits. If you left the property in great shape, uh, then you are absolutely entitled to your deposit back or a certain portion of it depending on what the you know, what the repairs had to be. Uh, so those are, are two or three things I can think of. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. getting dressed for work kids here we are in Columbia Tennessee a place called the bottoms okay looking for my key my, my guy's bringing the real key but I have a I'm gonna wait for the real key He's having a big party. Right? I know. There you go. <laughs>
All you got to say is how good of a landlord I am. That, you just got to say how good of a landlord I am. Well, I need it on tape. Come on, Donnie. Donnie, are you running from something? Come here. You got to tell me to the camera I'm a good landlord. Okay. Three weeks later, they're going to send me a check. Okay? I'm evicting you Friday. So you need to move a little quicker than that, because you're you'll be four weeks into me, and this is the first time I've gotten a phone call 22 days after the rent was due. Okay, 22 days after my rent's due from you and your brother, I don't have a nickel. Tell your brother to get off his rear end and get me some money. I appreciate your call. Mr. Bruce needs $550 times two. I need $1,100 from both from the two of you by Friday, or else your stuff's gonna be out in the street. $550 from you, $550 from him. That's $1,100. Okay. Now I got bad news. When you give me the money Friday, two days later your rent's due again. Okay. So you'll owe me $1,050, and he'll owe me $1,050 all in the next seven days. But you all need to come up with the money. Catholic Charities ain't going to give you that much. I'd go to Methodist Charities, Baptist Charities, Seventh-day Adventist Charities. you got to go to about seven charities to come up with that kind of money. And, and here's, what I, here's what I'm asking. What are you going to do next month? Okay, we just viewed the video about Mr. Bruce. And, uh, wow, I must say, sir, he is not quite the same uh ethical foundation that you have and one thing that kind of struck me was uh, in his conversation with two of his tenants he told them that if they had the $500 piece that they owed him he would pick that up today and the following day uh, he would owe them another thousand to cover the next month's rent and to me that was kind of unethical I'm not sure why, you know, if the rent was due, maybe it's not illegal, but, you know, if a person is having a problem paying rent and they're not 30 days late uh, after they paid the rent, do you think it's ethical for a landlord to respond the way he responded? Well, several things kind of struck me about the video. Yes, sir. The first thing that really struck me about the video was that he was carrying a gun. That's the most unethical thing. <laughs> I agree. He was, he I was agree. carrying a gun. I, I agree. mean, uh, even when I have personally gone to collect rent, yes, sir. or gone to talk to a, a tenant, I've never brought a gun with me. Yes, sir. It's too intimidating. Exactly. I mean, that just, wow. But, having said that, you know, on the what struck me about the requirement of, of, of rent today and rent tomorrow was I'm not sure exactly what the situation was. If they were already, you know, 30 days late on, on their rent and it was the first of the month and the rent was due again for the second month, then you could have, That's you know, that type of situation. Um, but what? You know, what I would, the comment I would make is collect the first $1,100, 550 from each tenant, and then if the next month's rent is due in a day, fine, give them at least 10 days to two weeks to pay. Yes, sir. You know, and then try and work out a, a deal where each month they paid the rent one week earlier than the previous month until they got back to the point where they were paying at the first of each month, or between the first and the fifth, or the first and tenth, whatever the arrangement is. If I, my, my guess is, if I went to a tenant and said, pay me $1,100 today, and tomorrow you got to pay me another $1,100, or two days from now you got to pay me another $1,100, if I was that tenant, I wouldn't pay you the first $1,100. Okay. With a gun. Yeah, with a gun. Because <laughs> I know I'd be evicted anyway. Two days later anyway. Yes, sir. So yes. why even pay the first? So to me, he was kind of defeating his purpose by not working with them in a way that it didn't seem to portray in that portion of the video. Now, he may have gone back later and said, okay, I'll give you 10 days or two weeks. I don't know. But it was a strange thing. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you for commenting on the video and taking time to watch the video. 
We have just met, interviewed, and been introduced to Tim Gregor, one half of the Gregor Realty team, an ethical landlord here in Nashville, and one I've had the, the opportunity uh, and the pleasure of knowing uh, for many years. And we have spoke to some of his tenants and, and went to a few of his properties, and they're all in an immaculate shape. Uh, and none of his tenants had anything negative to say about him uh, as a landlord, and we appreciate his time today. This concludes our interview. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Oh, isn't it great? Don't, don't have to move my furniture. I wish the wood started moving the furniture around. So now what's, what's the first to. thing you're going to do? Oh, my. <laughs> Lay down and rest in peace. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's, just, it's just great how people have been so good and gracious to us. And uh, I'm thankful. <laughs>